I have uh, two uh, questions. One is that uh, uh, since uh, last few quarters you have been mentioning that uh, there has been some slowdown in the discretionary expenditure. And at the same time, you are continuously launching, uh, you know, new products into the premium segment, uh, which is again dependent on the discretionary expenditures. And your growth is also coming from the premium segment products. So just wanted to understand the disconnect. Like, if uh, there is a slowdown, then how come the premium products are doing well? And why are we focusing on that segment? So I think uh, uh, we have always mentioned that our strategy is to ensure that we straddle the pyramid, which means have offerings at the top, the middle, and the bottom. Mm. Our focus in the recent years in terms of the premium segment was to ensure that our portfolio, which was, uh, which was more complete, to address the new emerging requirements of a much larger set of people who were expecting uh, uh, these sorts of offerings and new segments. And therefore, as we started looking at our business, and asked ourselves the question as to what is the portfolio we are likely to require to win in the India of tomorrow, with the consumers of tomorrow, in the mm. segments of tomorrow, the clear answer to all of that was that we will need to uh, augment our portfolio at the top end and drive up trading and premiumization. We are also absolutely convinced that irrespective of what happens for a few quarters, or because of slowdown, because of inflationary pressures, because the economy is going through all of this, despite all of that, the medium-term trend will be one towards upgrading and premiumization, and therefore, from a strategic we will introduce offerings which help complete our portfolio and help us win into the future. Now, just because we are doing that does not mean that we don't compete at the lower end. We have a portfolio which is complete. We do participate in all categories at the bottom end of the market, and we spend some time talking about wheel, for example, a short while ago in terms of the actions that we are taking. So the eye is not off the ball when it comes to uh, other segments, but for the future, uh, premium portfolio and premium segments will remain important, and that's why we have been driving uh, our presence out there. So, sir, which segment, uh, you know, enables you to understand that there has been a slowdown in discretionary expenditure? How you come to know means you track which segment which tells you that there has been a slowdown? Yeah, I think when we talk of segments and categories, there are reports which come, we track several reports, we track uh, uh, what Nielsen says, we track what the household panel talks about, we see our own growth rates, we talk to organized retailers and figure out from them what's happening. We also see uh, feedback from the other categories, just beyond what we are talking about, and the basis all of that, there is evidence to show that some of the categories which will become large, which are relatively discretionary at this stage, uh, are showing a slowing growth trend over what they had earlier. This doesn't mean that they're not growing. The rate of growth has been slower no, I, than what... I agree that, you know, there are there are some third-party reports which mention that, but are you, you know, but looking at your performance, it doesn't seem that you are feeling a pinch of a slowdown in discretionary because your premium segment is going on. So just wanted no, to understand, is it impacting you as a company or not? I think, you know, if you look at one of the segments of growth, uh, when you look at personal products, right, uh, if you recall, our personal products growth was, you know, generally used to be about 15%, closer to 16 odd percent. If you yeah. see in the last couple of quarters, we're seeing the growth at close to 12 to 13%. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's very, very clearly, uh, you know, one example, I can quote to you an example from ice cream, etc. but uh, just to give you one example. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, fine. Uh, so, second question is on your uh, royalty. Now, definitely you have mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, uh, though there has been an increase in royalty, but it will bring some added advantage from parent company, which can help you to improve your efficiency. Now, uh, my worry is that will your margins be impacted or higher royalty payment would be offset by some added advantage uh, which we get from the parent company and hence enabling you to maintain your margins? So uh, I think let me just, you know, maybe uh, maybe this might be the um, fourth or fifth time I'm making the statement, so apologies if it sounds repetitive. I just want to, you know, remind people and re reinforce that our goal to deliver competitive... Yes, sir, I agree, I, I understand, but, you know, uh, it's profitable, I agree, but can it be more profitable? That's what I need to understand. So when we say profitable growth, we mean that our operating margins should be in line with or ahead of 
the previous trend. Hello. Yeah. On profitability, our plan we always said we want to go ahead of the market and continue to demonstrate modest improvements in operating margin consistency. That's what we want to do, okay. and that's what we will work towards doing in the future. Okay, so you know, uh, so considering the impact of royalty, there is further room for margin improvement in coming quarters on account of yourself, you know, uh, cost structures and all those, rationalizing all those things. And, uh, I've articulated our position and uh, you can be sure that as a business, every one of us is committed to working towards that goal. Okay, okay. Yeah, that is very helpful, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you, Mr. Bedo. With this, I would like to hand over the conference to Mr. Thapar for the questions uh, in chat. Over to you, Mr. Thapar. All right. Thanks, Aldeep, uh, for moderating that session. Uh, before we bring the session to a close, there are a couple of questions that have come to us on the web. Uh, selecting a couple of them, so there's one from Nikhil Vora, uh, uh, which is to Nikhil. He says, Hi, Nikhil. Are you puzzled with the lack of a stimulant in SAL as a brand and as a category? And this at a time when competitive elements have been relatively sedate. And the second question is, most importantly, almost all of Unilever's uh, USD 1 million brands are now in India. So where is the future of new product developments in HUL? Okay, I can uh, um, more than think surprised. I, in many ways, before seeing your question, I had commented about uh, a file. It has taken time, not different from what's happened in the previous occasions when we've raised prices. Uh, I too would like this to be over. I suspect it would take a month or two more. Uh, I don't think it's a competitive issue like you said. It is, uh, it is not a competitive issue and I think you picked that up uh, correctly. Uh, we have seen a general slowdown, but the strength of SAL and its market share within the segment is better today than earlier. It is a combination of some kind of slowdown in the market rate and uh, pipeline corrections which happen to be significant when it comes to the fashion. So that's really what I would say when it comes to Fair and lovely. As far as the large brands are concerned, uh, brands like Tresemme, etc. have just come in. We see significant opportunities uh, going forward. Uh, we, I know that you are passionate about foods and uh, the opportunity that it has. It has not been the uh, part of the business which has been growing at the rate we would like. But I do believe that going forward it will start contributing to larger and larger part of our business uh, as we move forward. So, um, I remain... Um, uh, I remain optimistic about our ability to continue growing this business and delivering competitive growth uh, into the future as the Indian market expands rapidly. Okay, we have another question from Sagarika Mukherjee who asked that how is the, how with the beverages segment margins expand by 200 basis points when tea prices have shot up significantly? I think uh, you know we addressed it earlier. So the uh, the 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 tea cost increase in the quarter is obviously something to play out in the future. Uh, tea is procured in season. It is not something that is procured you know 365 days of the year. So the margin expansion of the quarter is not directly correlated with what we've seen play out in terms of the procurement uh, prices in the market. And Sagarika's next question is where exactly is the slowdown in skin care? Which price segment is getting hit exactly? Age Miracle is premium. Then where is the slowdown exactly happening? I think I briefly mentioned uh, earlier that uh, if you look at skin care, this, we see the slower rate of growth uh, across both face care and hand and body. So it is not specifically isolated to, you know, a single price point. Okay, and our last question is from Sharif Pardesi who asks, can you please get us some understanding on volume growth by channel, traditional trade, grocery, chemist, wholesale and market trade, and how has your CSC business performed? So, Sharish, uh, our CSC business um, uh, has recovered. You will recall in September quarter we had pointed out that that uh, uh, was a drag. Uh, I'm pleased to say that it has recovered. It's a different matter that the recovery has been offset by the, the slow pace in modern trade retail. As far as, you know, growth by channel, across the various channels, Sirish, you will appreciate this is not something that, uh, uh, you know, we share. Of course, we track this very, very regularly within the business, but it's not something that we would like to be sharing uh, given its competitive implications. But thanks anyway, Sirish, for your questions. Thank you. I think with that, we'd like to bring the call to a close. Just so that you know, an audio-visual replay of this event will be available on the Investor Relations website, and you can always go back and refer to it. With that, I'd like to bring the call to a close. Thank you, everyone, for your participation, and have a great evening. Bye.
Thank you so much, all the panelists. With this, we conclude the conference for today. Wish you all a great evening ahead. You all can't disconnect your line. Thank you.